Hey there guys, it's me the Fanatic, and welcome to my team builder for week 2 of Pokemon Premier League. This week we are playing Unlawful Exile, also known as Liam, part of the um, Unlawful Exiles. Yeah, Pair of Exiles, that's the one. I, I almost forgot, which, well actually I did forget, but, that, but that's bad, yeah. Part of the Pair of Exiles. Anyway, it's Norwich City vs West Chan United, week 2. Rather spookily, tomorrow in real life, Norwich City are playing West Ham United in the Premier League. There's a lot riding in this game, a lot of uh, national pride, or no, not national pride, city pride, I, I guess, Norwich versus London. So it's important I win. It was also important to win because last week Liam did get the 1-0 win. This, uh, last week I got the 1-0 loss. Uh, I beat, I lost against Shardy, Liam beat Travesty, uh, the boy from Down Under. So this week I had a game plan. Um, last week against Shardy, I think I had a game plan and didn't stick to it very well. This time I had a game plan and I know I had to try and stick to it because if I did I would win. So I'll go over my game plan a bit more um, once I get to Pokemon that were required for that plan to happen. So first Pokemon we have uh, captain of the team EasyJet Mega Latios. Oh wait, I just need—I just realised I need to open them up. I'm looking at Showdown, which has all my EVs and stuff on it. But I just remembered I need to show it on my DS while I do it. Right, that's better. So we have Latios. As you might be able to tell from the uh, stats on the top screen, we are bringing a offensive Latios. And do you want to know the reason why? The reason why is because Liam has no Steel or Fairy types, so I can drop Draco Meteors, and it will do a clean 70 to 80 percent to you know physical wall or just kill offensive threats. You know, switchings are limited, so. This thing could have put huge, or could put, sorry, huge pressure on against Liam's team. Especially he has uh, Mega Venusaur and Hitmonchan, which are both very weak to this thing and struggle at hitting it. Uh, apart from the rogue scarfed Hitmonchan with Ice Punch, um, this thing could take on a lot of his uh, bulky threats. So uh, it was quite important that I bought a powerful set. I did talk to Shardy about it, and I almost bought... Sub, Calm Mind, Recover, Stored Power. Stored Power at plus 3 does 65% to max special defense Mew. That's just disgusting. And that's without any special, a special attack investment. This thing is scary. Um, that was if I bought a bulky set. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to bring an all-out offensive set because... I just want to do instant damage. I have other things here. I mean, the game plan meant I didn't really have to go for a Carmine variant. Um, Liam told me he was very scared of a Carmine variant and he'd seen me use it against Shardy, so he is prepared for it. So maybe, you know, not bringing it was the best thing. And let's go with the EVs. I have 28 in HP because it's pretty much spare, 4 in defense, 252 in um, special attack, 4 in special defense, and 220 in speed. Now, you're going to hear me get a lot of things wrong with speed in this team order because I made everything. Uh, Fast enough to outspeed, max speed, Miss Magius, uh, not including it being a Scarf Miss Magius. I completely forgot that Liam had a Galvantula, which is uh, 108 base speed, and of course, can hit Mega Latios super effective, so that was a really bad prepping um, point on my behalf. So, where you hear me say, outspeeding Miss Magius, I should have done it to outspeed uh, Galvantula, but... We'll see how it goes. So, yeah, Psychic to hit Venusaur and um, Hitmonchan also has the chance of hitting uh, everything else, really. He doesn't have Dark type, so, you know, he hasn't got a safe switch. Um, also got the chance of dropping special defense, in which case means Draco Meteor just pretty much kills anything on his team. Shadow Ball was there for Mew because Mew could safely switch in on a Draco or a Psychic uh, otherwise. And even then, Shadow Balling does about 44% to special defense for Mew, I think. Um, but, you know, again, chance of special defense drop. And then we have recover as our final move because we can recover on a lot of switches. I can switch this thing on a few of um, Liam's Pokemon which he won't want to stay in on and I can get a free recover if needed. Um, I've gone over my EV so that was Mega Latios this game. Next up was Skarmory. Now Skarmory was one of the Pokemon in my free point plan. Yes I had three Pokemon which I basically wanted to do the main work the rest were kind of support. Um, so Skarmory was step two of my plan. Uh, I said I'm going in a stupid order because uh, I'm going with the same order as I have it on Showdown right now and the way I uh, built the team. 
Anyway, we have simply gone max defense Skarnry because I need something that can stop Mammoth Swine, otherwise it just completely rips me a new one. Um, so, I had to make sure I bought something bulky enough to take on Mammoth Swine. Even with freeze dry, Mammoth Swine can't do too much. Um, as you can see, Skarnry, we've got the safety goggles. This completely shuts down the, uh, Mega Venusaur completely. Four times resist his uh, grass stab, immune to his poison stab. Knockoff isn't going to do much. Um, Earthquake is obviously I'm immune unless I roost, but he's faster than me. Uh, the only thing you can hit me with is HP, fire, or electric, um, or whatever else HP he can run that is super effective. Um, and if he didn't bring that, this thing just completely walled Venusaur. And the plan was if he had Venusaur in, I'd try and get this thing in on a sleep powder and start racking up spikes. But before I can do that, I want to get rid of any hazards he has up because he has the chance to run Stealth Rocks and Sticky Web. Now, looking at this team, um, I obviously have two immunities to Sticky Web in Skarmory and Mega Latios. However, my other four Pokemon don't appreciate it at all. Um, I have quite a fast offensive team, so Sticky Web was in the back of my mind, which made me think, you know, I better bring Default this week. Get rid of all hazards first before I hazard stack. That was basically the game plan. Every time we bought Venusaur in, I could have Default or I could have to stack on him. So uh, that was the main reason, uh, along with trying to stop Mano Swine, um, I bought this thing. Uh, EVs simply match uh, max HP, max defense, and four in special defense, just to try and take any other hits as best as it can. Um, that was Skarmory this week. Uh, next we have our special wall. Um, like Skarmory, max special defense, max HP, with four in special attack. Um, basically, originally I had put EVs in this, I think it was 44, to speed creep a no speed uh, Venusaur, but I took Psychic off for Protect instead, which means I could take that back out from speed and reinvest it in bulk. Um, basically, this thing, let, let me pick out his special threats. Um, he has Mew, which is potential, Mega Venusaur, which I can either go either way, obviously. Uh, Vaporeon, Galvantula, Miss Magius, and Alakazam. It can handle all of his, like, Galvantula, Miss Magius, and Alakazam, he can handle them easy. So, it was important I bought a really specially bulky version of uh, Florgis this week, just so I could um, take them things on a lot easier. There was also Vaporeon, which is going to be special if he does bring that. I did expect him to bring that, because otherwise Darmanitan does just shit on his team. Um, but Vaporeon is also bulky, and it takes on things like my Mega Latios, and I was going to say Nidoking. Uh, yeah, I guess Nidoking pretty well. Um, but obviously, I have my Bay that is Heliolisk there to sort that thing out. But we'll get onto that later. We've got Moonblast, Protect, Wish, Heal Bell. I decided to go for a more of a cleric roll this time. Last time, I also had Wish and uh, Heal Bell. Didn't have the Protect. Protect this time was to scout out Mamo Swine mainly and also recover up on everything because I needed this thing around to do with his special threats. Um, I was expecting a mixed Mamo Swine. And I wanted to check for uh, any odd moves uh, that could catch out Skarmory, because otherwise Skarmory had a good time taking on Mamo Swine. Um, but yeah, otherwise, this thing was here just to kind of hit things hard. Again, uh, on his team, does he have a Fairy Resist? I don't think he does. No, he doesn't have a Fairy Resist, so you know. Um, it's always nice to have Fairy Spam, because Fairy Spam is cool. So that is my uh, Forges this week. So now we get on to... Point one of my uh, game plan this week. So, we have Trixie Zorok. And I forgot to nickname my Zorok. I just realized I forgot to nickname my Zorok. It's meant to be called Trixie. Um, but, yeah. Uh, basically, this thing is a really cool set. I really like it. Uh, it was black glasses with Sucker Punch Knockoff Pursuit U Tan. The original plan was, uh, it was like, you know, an 80% chance of me leading this thing on, depending on what Pokemon he bought, and what I thought his lead would be, and I almost threw my DS off the desk, that was close. Um, so not my plan was to catch him with a lead in you, um, go in with uh, it disguised as Skarmory, so he would try and set up rocks on me, or you know, try and taunt me or something. Um, because that's the kind of thing Mew would do to shut down Skarmory, taunting. So, I, you know, I thought, you know, knock off. Once I go for knock off, it's going to reveal I am Zorok, because Skarmory, as far as I know, doesn't get knock off. If it does, that's cool. Um, that will do a lot of damage. If it's physically defensive, I think it will do about 75%. So, he's low on health. I will outspeed it. And at that point, I think, you know, he's probably going to switch out 
fearing a sucker punch or a U-turn. So I'm going to Pursuit Trap him. And that was Zorok's main reason to come. It was also there because, you know, Alakazam and Miss Magus and things. And, uh, you know, Sucker Punch priority is nice. Um, but the main thing... The main job for this Zorok was to Pursuit Trap Mew. Because I figured it would probably... I mean, he only has that and Hitmonchan as Defogger slash Spinners. Um, and I can deal with Hitmonchan a lot easier than I can with um, Mew. So I figured, you know what, this thing is going to be my dedicated way of taking down Mew. Once Mew was gone, I would, you know, I had in my game plan that Defog uh, was going to be gone. So I was like, alright, so once Mew's gone, I can start to hazard stack. That was my game plan. This is why this thing was point one. Um, black glasses, you know, I didn't need variation in moves um, because uh, Liam had no dark type resistances. So it was, it was going to do damage to whatever he switched out in... Um, you know, so knockoff especially. Uh, the only thing he can switch in on knockoff is Mega Venusaur, and even then, a crit one does about 40 to 50 percent. So, forces synthesis and whatnot can gain momentum with the U-turn. Um, so Zorok was there to basically check Mew, Alakazam, Miss Magus, also knock off everything it could, and stay disguised as long as possible to really play my games with Liam. Um, so that was Zorok. Then we get to um, Heliolisk. This was kind of like. 2.5 of the plan. I saw he I saw Vaporeon and I was like, right, this thing has to come purely for Vaporeon. I also had to bring it Scarfed. Purely because Staraptor is a thing that once Heliolisk is gone, uh, not Heliolisk, once Skarmory is gone, I don't have any switch-ins to. Much the same as Marish Wine. So um that was the plan to bring in Scarfed Heliolisk. Oh, that's a point. I guess you could bring Staraptor as a defogger. If, if you want to, but I'm not sure um, not sure it's the best way to use a Staraptor. Anyway, back to Heliolisk. Oh, I didn't know if I went over Zorok's uh, EVs. By the way, the max uh, attack, max speed for in... I have a defense, can't remember which one. Uh, it was there to run the risk of a speed type with Miss Mages. Um, next we have, or next, I say next we have, obviously we have Helios, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Hyper Voice, Dark Pulse. Now, I knew that I had to get rid of Mamoswine to make this thing effective because if he has Vaporeon, there's a chance he'll bring the uh, Wish Protect set. Mainly because he can just stay in safely or switch into Mamo safely with that combination. I have a click Hyper Voice and he stays in and doesn't take any damage, or I click Thunderbolt and he switches out to Mamo next turn because uh, I am Scarfed, mainly because I wanted to take out that uh, Staraptor if he did bring it. Um, I bought Dark Pulse to deal with uh, his pesky ghost type switching into um, Miss Magius because obviously that thing is quite bulky with an Assault Vest. Um, I also had the chance to flinch things with it. Thunderbolt was there as my powerful stab because obviously I needed to deal with Staraptor and Vaporeon effectively. And Volt Switch was there for momentum uh, if I could ever get it. But you know, with Mammoth Swine around, it's quite difficult to do that because one wrong move, oh, excuse me, one wrong move for me. And I could lose Pokemon with Manus Wine around, purely because, you know, Skarmory, if that thing's gone, no switch-ins. Finally, we have point three of the plan of action, Darmanitan. Now, I think a lot of you guys know how good Darmanitan can be. I mean, just look at it. This is Adamant Scarf Darmanitan. Um, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, this thing, either one-shots, or two shots his whole team after spikes. That includes Mega Venusaur max defense. Flare Blitz does about 55 to 60%. So if I could get like the tiniest bit of damage off to that thing before it switches in on three layers of spikes, Darm just cleans up. That's the same with Mew as well. It's about 60% to fully defensive Mew. Uh, obviously Mew isn't going to want to stay because I do get U-turn and Flare Blitz does that much. Um, Vaporeon even gets two-shotted by Flare Blitz after Spikes, so he didn't have a switch into this thing, um, and that's why Scarf Darmanitan was my plan. I could run Adam Adamant because it would outspeed Jolly, Max Speed, Scarf, Mamoswine, and Flare Blitz, even with Thick Fat, still dies! 101% minimum uh, if he's not got any HP investment. After Spikes, it would just kill it. I mean, Darm was so... It was like he had such a good matchup this week. Especially once Vaporeon was gone, if he did bring it. Which I was very much expecting, because 
Heliolisk is bay, but otherwise I might have struggled a bit to take it down because it is so specially bulky and I do have a lot of special offense. Um, but Darn was there to basically kill things. Max a attack, two, four, four in speed and then four in HP, four in either defense. Yeah, and that, I think that le left me with one speed point more than Mamo Swine would have had. So, um... That was Darmanitan just to uh, kind of kill things, I guess. So, yeah, the original plan was, you know, get rid of Mew, stop defogging from happening, Hazard stack, but get rid of his Hazards first, and then try and get uh, Darm and Heliolisk to do the damage with U-Turn, Volt Switch, and Shenanigans, or, you know, just straight up power. Hyper Voice does a lot of damage to a lot of things. Um, I didn't bring Surf for Mamo Swan because I was very conscious that, you know, uh, if he switched in his Vaporeon on it, if he brings it, it's just going to heal itself back up. And, Vaporeon's hard enough to take down, it is, so we don't want that. So that was my team builder for week two of the Pokemon Premier League. Quick summary of my team. We've got Megalatios, Skarmory, Florgius, Zoroark, Heliolisk, and Darmanitan. On paper, I look at my team and think, oh, I wish, you know what, I could have had a better team. But once I see them in-game, I really like how they gel together. I really like how it's going. Anyway, I'm going to put this uh, video up as soon as possible. And then I will have the uh, battle uploaded as soon as possible shortly after. It's a good battle. You don't want to miss it. It's a good game. And Liam's new to the whole format, so I was really unsure of what his playstyle would be like. So it was, an, it was really interesting in that sense. Um, and he was obviously coming back uh, off the back of a win last week. I was coming off the back of a loss. So I had the mindset, thank God I have to win this game. Otherwise I'm going to fall behind the pack from the start. And we don't want that. Anyway, make sure you do watch um, the battle later on. I will leave a link to Liam's video, his battle. I'm not sure if he's doing team analysis videos or not. He probably, I think he goes over his team before he goes into the battle. So make sure you watch his battle video because it will go over all his uh, team choices. As well as you'll understand his viewpoints of what he's done the plays for and such and so on. I am rambling. So I will see you shortly for my week two battle of Pokemon Premier League. Division 3, no, Division 3, Division 1 Season 3 game. See you later.